Imagine a simple mental exercise that brings you into the moment. Imagine understanding the illusion of time and being able to break it. Imagine ending the conflicts from the past once and for all. We are DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind, resolve it. Welcome to our series on Solving Scientology, an in-depth evaluation of Scientology, the Church, their issues, and how such can be resolved. I'm Allison Tandry, host and co-founder of DIY Salvation, former church member, auditor, and course supervisor. If you want to know why I left, another video on this channel explains such. If you are a Scientologist, understand I was once like you. I paid the money. I conformed to the policies. I ignored the bad press. I suffered through the struggles I felt necessary to attain my spiritual freedom and secure mankind's future. I know nearly everything that you know, and felt everything you feel now. Yet it's not my intent to dissuade you from your religion or your church. I know I can't, and I know why. Scientology has the potential to benefit everyone but if it has any chance of projecting into the future, much less freeing all mankind as they claim they want to, a few things will need to change. If you're looking for a video filled with accusations and speculation, please look elsewhere, as I intend to only stick with the indisputable facts of the matter that exist in the Church's own policies and practices that everyone, non-Scientologist, anti-Scientologist, Church public, staff or executive alike already know about. Scientology bashing has never solved anything for the church or its critics. Only the truth, coupled with constructive criticism and viable solutions will. I now present to you the five main barriers every Scientologist needs to overcome in order to go clear. Number 1. Money. If you're not affluent, willing to go into debt, or join staff and work long hours for little pay, you're not going to go clear with Scientology auditing. Sure you can train to be an auditor and team up with someone else, but still, academy training and e-meters are by no means cheap. The next condition that needs to be met is what I like to call the Church of Scientology as a second government one answers to. While a member, you must comply with the Church's policies. If you know someone who is critical of the Church, you can't be involved with them. If it's a family member, you have to handle them. You're not allowed to file lawsuit against another Scientologist if they owe you money or damage your property. Any complaints about the church or other Scientologists must be handled internally. These are only a handful of the many policies the church enforces on its members. The third condition has to do with the church's public relations. In other words, the preservation of the church's reputation as one of goodwill. You are not permitted to forward any news article, blog, or news story that criticizes the church. One must be prepared to refute any such attacks online or in the media whether or not they have any basis in fact. The church would rather you not even read or view any such stories online or via the media, and I do know of some cases where members have been explicitly instructed not to read certain books or watch certain news stories that criticize the church. There are also sections of Scientology courses which specifically train members on how to handle critics, 
and you are expected to handle such accordingly. The fourth of my points has to do with other mental, spiritual, and religious practices. While mainstream practices like Christianity, Judaism and Islam are normally tolerated, one is forbidden to engage in spiritual practices the Church does not approve of, including and especially anyone claiming to have a similar or better approach to resolving the human mind. They are particularly intolerant of any spiritual practices developed by former members. The fifth, final, and lesser-known barrier to going free in Scientology has to do with your own personal and medical history. One must not have had employment with the FBI, CIA, or IRS. One must not be terminally ill. One must not have a psychiatric history that includes institutionalization and or medications if they hope to receive auditing. So never mind whether or not you are interested in taking this route. Never mind whether or not you believe L. Ron Hubbard holds the key to solving all of mankind's problems. You can believe he's the next coming of Christ or Buddha and if even one of these five points is not in place, the church will at best limit what kinds of services you can receive, and in extreme cases, may just shun you and instruct all of their members not to have anything to do with you. It's unfortunate, because even though I am no longer a church member, I still firmly believe that the Scientology technology is a valid answer to resolving man's mental and spiritual condition. Unfortunately, the majority of us will not be able to push through all five of these barriers, much less maintain this way of life long enough to go clear. Scientology in its current state can only possibly benefit the affluent, the tolerant, the forgiving, and the exceptional. And with that in mind, if you have a friend, family member, or business associate who is a Scientologist, do not ever give them a hard time about it. Don't even think of showing them this video. Chances are, their intentions are good, and you need not make life any more difficult for them than it already is. I know, I've been there, done that, and I would not wish the criticism I got for being a Scientologist on anyone else. It's the church and their policies that pose a problem, not the members themselves. Always remember that. Thanks for your time. In future installments I will go further in-depth about the Scientology technology itself, the practices of the church, how Scientology can and has benefited many people, yet still works against themselves, and how these issues can be resolved for the church, non-members, and ex-members alike. I'm Alison Tandry of DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind. Resolve it.